for you. Ready? Yes, I am. Yeah, when you are ready, please do clap. Okay. One, two, three. So, my name is Alice Herbst and I am an artist working and living in Stockholm, Sweden. So, the most exciting things that I'm currently working on is my new project. It's called The Whispering Game and it's completely something that I've been wanting to do for a long time. And it's, it's kind of developed through my, my recent works. So these paper objects, it's, some of them are things that I will actually draw. So I, some of them I do have in my own apartment actually. And some of the objects I just find on photos on, for example, antique stores online. And instead of just buying everything that I enjoy in some way, I can just, what if I pretend that I have them? And just pretend they're in my custody, drawing them and putting them here and there. And, and I can just reuse them. And that is actually why the name Whispering Game come from. In Sweden, it would be directly translated. That is basically the one thing that you did in preschool. If you also did this, it's like a whispering game where you're just sitting in a circle and you're whispering something to the other kids sitting there and then they whisper and it goes around in the circle and then the last person will say what the word or what the phrase was. And it's usually very transformed to something completely different. This is the first painting of that project. I started to think about like what I've been doing the last years and I, I tried to focus it in a project in a way. I usually do not work like that. This is the first time that I feel like it really makes sense for me to plan ahead and work with a specific project, which I decided to call the Whispering Game. And what this made me think of is how actually a rumor is spread usually, how one word goes to the next one and in the end everybody knows something that might not be really true. So after thinking a lot about this, I wanted to also change this in a symbolic way to work with in painting. So that's why I decided to create the Whispering Game. For example, um, this small basket I did, I just found it in a, on a photo and I wanted to draw it. I wanted to see how this can change over time in my work. So as simple as that, but to first draw it from the photo and then take a photo of it in my own setting with my own character and hold it. In the end, I took a photo of this one and I used it in another painting and I will probably do this for many times. So maybe this object will show up in paintings in five years that I've done if I continue. So it's also about like what is fake and what is real. I use these um, small cups also for the painting and when we took the photos they created a shadow like they were almost real cups. It's about surface and uh, what also what you pretend to be and what you really are and in the end it was only 2D objects but to, to play around with what is fake and what is real. So she is just randomly standing there but I feel like she's representing something. She's representing also like the search for identity. This is also uh, like a cut out doll from the 50s so you're supposed to be putting dresses on her. So I would probably create dresses for this doll as well and she can show up in the paintings with different personas too. So this is just her introduction here. <laughs> And uh, this is also with inspiration from this. I don't know, it's an abstract shape and I've used it in so many paintings before. So since years back, so it will be fun also when the people owning the paintings can recognize the pattern in the new ones as well. So it's like a hidden, <laughs> it's also a fun, yeah. I think it's, it, it's a fun thing, but it also has a meaning to me, so. My workflow and process, it's a lot of, of work before I start putting my brush on the canvas because I like to really relate to the work beforehand. So everything always starts from like a visual idea in my head. I have a very busy visual ongoing process in my head all the time. It can always start with something actually quite shallow, like something from a pattern of a dress or a color scheme, which I like. And then I go into myself and I think about like, what do I really want to portray? I want to know that I want to use this dress in some way. Create a person that reminds me of myself or something that is completely fascinating and different from myself. And then I, I will start putting together an outfit, a wig, and if I have created the, the small paper 2D objects, Chris will always help me because he's a very good photographer. 
that helps me take the photos. So we will arrange somewhere, putting these different objects around and I will transform myself into this new character, which always feels a bit like a performance in a way. Sometimes I feel very vulnerable, sometimes I feel like I'm very much myself or someone that I used to be. And sometimes I feel like I just made up someone that I really don't know yet that much. So it's still working very therapeutic, but then I do work in the very playful manner with all of the craft around it and all of the playing dress up. So this like working to make a good photo, then I pick a photo that I like from the collection that we got and then I rework the photo even more before I start putting the oil paint on the canvas. So I like the, the process before a lot. I didn't touch a pencil or a brush for I think yeah, my whole like teenage years, until I was uh, 19. And when I was 19, I came home from, from Los Angeles since I had tried on being a model. And I realized very fast that this modeling experience, it wasn't something that I wanted to continue uh, on as a path, since I had been struggling so much with uh, my perfectionism. Like long story short, my teenage years, I was struggling so much with my uh, self-esteem and the way I, I view myself. And I also noticed that being a model definitely affected these parts of myself in a bad way. And I had learned to, to grow more self-esteem and I noticed how being a model just took that away from me again. So I just came home from Los Angeles, started to work with uh, watercolor in a very therapeutic way, just to think about something else than myself and how, what I look like and what I have been through and then apply for preparatory art school, like without thinking about that, like, this is gonna be what I'm doing. So it was just to, to stress down, think about something else. And on that path, just naturally, I met Chris in art school and he saw that I didn't think about my future at all, that I just was trying to avoid these thoughts. But he actually told me like seriously one day in my apartment that why aren't we just going to focus on this? We now more than ever before we are able to to put our future in on our own hands thanks to social media and building a platform. And he had already done that a little himself. So I just remember this exact day that we decided like, let's do this. Let's make it work. Yeah. So Harper's Bazaar Germany, the magazine, they reached out to me this summer and they told me one very interesting thing that they had coupled up with Maxmara, the Italian brand, uh, because they looked for a Swedish artist to, uh, to convey their latest collection, which was the resort collection for 2024. And it was called Septum Flowers, which means seven flowers. And why they invented this name was because of the inspiration from Swedish Midsummer. And seven flowers actually a um, tale about, or it's a, it's a tradition, I would say. Mainly it's about the idea of collecting seven different wildflowers in order to put them under the pillow on the midsummer eve in Sweden and then dream about the future love. And I, that is a very silly but beautiful thing. And uh, I have done that when I was younger, so I understood the, the inspiration behind the collection. And Ian Griffiths, uh, which is the, the head designer of Max Mara, he was inspired by uh, also Swedish folklore. So. He looked at the, the Swedish history. For me, that was such an interesting task. So I was invited to the, the Stockholm City Hall uh, where they unveiled the collection. So I got to see the, all the clothes uh, in real time as well, which was very important for this task. Do you know anything about Swedish Midsummer? <laughs> no? So it's like uh, you are gathering in June uh, in when it's like the sun is highest in the sky. Uh, we usually dress a pole in leaves and flowers and put it in the ground and usually we will gather and dance around the singing songs and playing instruments and music. So it's a very social activity and usually this should, if possible, be celebrated when it's really good weather. Uh, but sometimes it will of course rain because since we're in Sweden we cannot really affect the weather. So the collection was really gothic in a way that they had used these black and white flowers to work as crowns and headbands around the models' heads. And usually these leaf and flower crowns where we wear are more colorful. 
And I liked that part of the collection because I hadn't really seen Midsummer in that way. So this, I kept this idea and wanted to, to work in this a little bit more gothic way with the painting. So I always feel like there's sounds in my work too. So this is like very quiet. It's a quiet room and it's a large room and it's only her standing there. So to, to think about like maybe the clock is making sounds and it's a bit gothic. And <laughs> It's mainly the girls where like young girls should collect the flowers on the wild field and then they should dream about the future husband. But it's like we're modern time now. Oh, come on, like everybody can do this. They are expecting for starving. Yeah, it's like kissing the frog if you have the same kind of idea. Like if you see a frog, you can kiss the frog and it turns into a prince. Yeah, yeah it's kind of like that. So also I want to mention like so all the four the four paintings that I do have, I mentioned, I named them after flowers and fauna and nature because I want all the, the four pieces to be representing one of the wildflowers. So I, I'm planning to make three more, even though they didn't request this, because I want to fulfill the collection of the seven wildflowers. If I would find a common subject in my work, that would be identity. I felt like I was so ashamed when I was younger of myself and things that I did and I used to be walking around with guilt all the time. It's coming from being a teenager, moving around, being so sensitive to the differences compared to the other place where I used to live, like seeing how how women dress completely different, behaving completely different, having different interests than I was used to. So I think I've naturally learned to be very sensitive and it's difficult to to get away from that so it all boils down to my history of trying out identities when I was younger and realizing that no matter as much as I would try to adapt to different people and surroundings I would always feel like I was playing charades or trying to be someone that I wasn't in the end not really knowing who I really was the authentic self and as I'm growing older I realized that I don't need to define myself. That, that can be the defining thing for me and that is completely okay and that is who I am. When I came back to painting it's almost like go to why I really paint. It's kind of like making my past more beautiful. Yeah. <laughs>